this is Dr. Tom Ryan. Uh, today I'd like to do a respiratory exam with you. Is that okay? That's fine. What's your name? Dara. Nice to meet you, Dara. Good to meet you. Now I'm just going to reposition your bed, first of all. Okay. And would you be able to take off your t-shirt? No problem. And could you sit back against the bed? For general inspection, always go to the end of the bed and take a step back from the patient. The following general observations can be made about any patient. Comment on whether the patient looks well or unwell. Are they awake and alert or drowsy? Comment on the patient's colour. Comment on their nutritional and hydration status. Comment on whether the patient is overweight, cachectic, fluid overloaded or dehydrated. Now focus on the patient's respiration. Is the patient breathing comfortably or are they dyspneic? Measure the respiratory rate. Comment on the use of accessory muscles of respiration. Comment on any abnormal breathing sounds such as wheeze, strider, hoarseness or pursed breathing. Does the patient have a cough and if so, is it productive? Note the presence and contents of a sputum cup. Look for equipment or devices that are attached to or surrounding the patient. Comment on any respiratory specific medications around the patient and their delivery devices, particularly a spacer or a nebulizer. Note if the patient has an IV line and if receiving any medications or feed intravenously, check the bag and comment on what they are receiving. Is the patient on oxygen? If so, how is it being delivered and at what flow rate? Look for a chest drain and water seal. Is there a urinary catheter? Are there any physiotherapy devices around the patient to help with the cleaning of secretions? Comment on any visible wounds, scars or deformities of the chest wall. Look for any stigmata of a pancos tumour, such as dorsal guttering of the hand or a Horner syndrome. Note the location of the patient. For example, a patient may be on a general ward in a high dependency unit or a coronary care unit. Note any signs around the bed. You just breathe normally there. Measure the patient's respiratory rate for at least 15 seconds. Okay. Now move to the patient's right hand side for examination of the hands. So Dara, I'm going to give you this pillow. Would you have to put your hands on it? Place the patient's hands on a pillow for comfort. Are you in any pain at all? No. Could I just get you to lift Next, examine the fingers for signs of clubbing. Look for peripheral cyanosis in the fingertips. Look for tar staining, indicative of heavy smoking. Check each finger in turn for increased fluctuance of the nail bed and loss of nail bed angle. Okay, and could you put your two index fingers together like that, the nails together like that? To perform Shamrot's test, ask the patient to oppose the nails of the index fingers of each hand. Look for light at the nail bed between the two nails. Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much. Uh, can I get you to turn your hands over, please? Look for palmar erythema. The redness will usually appear in the hypothenar eminence. Is there pallor of the palmar creases, which is seen in anemia? Check capillary refill. Normal capillary refill is less than three seconds. Okay. I'm just going to measure your pulse rate, if that's all right. Assess the pulse rate and rhythm for approximately 15 seconds. If you've not already done so, this is a good time to measure the respiratory rate by shifting your attention from the counting of the pulse to counting breaths without telling the patient you were doing so. Okay, Dara, could I get you to put your, hand, your arms out like this? Look for a fine tremor in the hands, which is a sign of overuse of beta-2 agonists. Dara, could I get you to put your hands out straight as if you were trying to stop a bus? Note any flapping tremor around the wrist joints. Alright, and then can I get you to put your hands straight up in the air like this? 
If the patient has an apical lung tumour, this can restrict blood flow back to the chest, resulting in facial erythema or plethora and difficulty breathing. This is called Pemberton's sign. I'm just going to have a little look at your face, if that's okay. Um, I'm just going to pull your eye down like that, is that alright? Mm -hmm. The eyes are examined for conjunctival pallor and signs of Horner syndrome. Okay, and could I get you to tilt your head back, please? I'm just going to shine this up your nose, if that's alright. Mm. Using a pen torch, inspect the nostrils for polyps, engorged turbinates or a deviated septum. And can I get you to open your mouth? Look around the patient's mouth and then ask them to open it. Note any peripheral or central cyanosis and comment on the patient's dentition. Put your tongue back in and show me the base of your tongue. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to put this pillow behind your head to support your head, if that's alright. So can you lie back on that? Okay. Uh, I'm going to be looking at your neck. If I could get you to just look over your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. Next, the jugular venous pulse is assessed. It is important to ensure that the sternocleidomastoid muscle is fully relaxed as the internal jugular vein lies beneath this and will not be visible otherwise. The internal jugular vein runs behind sternocleidomastoid which itself runs between the mastoid process and the sternoclavicular joint. The external jugular is often visible more lateral to sternocleidomastoid. You can ignore this. It is usually possible to see the jugular venous pulsation just above the medial head of the clavicle. Note the complex waveform. When a pulsation is seen, palpate it. A JVP is impalpable unless grossly elevated. If you feel a pulse, you are actually seeing the carotid pulsation. Know the features of a JVP, summarized by the mnemonic voice. Visible, obliterable, impalpable, complex waveform, empties from below and fills from above. Next, check the hepatojugular reflex by pressing into the right upper quadrant while watching for a rise in JVP. It is normal for there to be a transient rise. A persistent elevation indicates right ventricular failure or fluid overload. It is also a good test to confirm the venous nature of a neck pulsation. Okay, that's perfect. And you can look straight ahead again. Um, I'm just going to put my fingers here in your throat. It can be a little bit uncomfortable. All right, just let me know. Assess for tracheal deviation by locating the suprasternal notch and palpating the trachea with your middle finger in this notch. Feel either side of the trachea with the index and ring fingers. Note if the trachea is in the midline or deviated to one side. Can you take a deep breath in and out? Feel for tracheal tug as the patient takes a deep breath. Thank you. The examination of the anterior chest is often the primary focus of an OSCE. Start your exam with general inspection and then move on to closer inspection. You may more clearly see skeletal abnormalities, scars, asymmetry of chest wall movement, or the swelling of subcutaneous emphysema. I'm just going to compress your rib cage if that's okay. Mm -hmm. This assesses for any rib trauma. If there's a fracture or bruise, the pain localizes to the affected area. Now I'm just going to feel for the placement of your heart. Palpate now for the apex beat. This is the most inferior lateral point where the pulsation of the heart is palpable. When it is found, identify its anatomical location to determine if it is displaced. It should be located in the fifth left intercostal space on the midclavicular line. So Dara, I'm just going to put my two hands on your, on your chest. Yeah. Dara, I'll get you to take a deep breath in and out through your mouth. This assesses symmetry of chest wall movement. Okay, and another one. This assesses the chest out. expansion. Thumbs should move and symmetrically and normal expansion is at least five centimeters. Your thumbs must meet at the moment of full expiration for an accurate assessment of chest expansion. Uh, so will you be able to repeat after me, blue balloons? Blue balloons. And every time I move my hand. This assesses tactile fremitus. Position the side of your hand in the intercostal spaces to maximize sensitivity. Fremitus is increased over consolidation, lower collapse or solid masses. It is decreased over effusion. Thank you. So I'm going to tap around your chest. 
Percuss the anterior chest, starting by tapping directly on the clavicles. Move in an S-shaped pattern and percuss three to four areas. Try to align your static finger with the intercostal spaces for a clearer percussion note. Percuss two areas in the axilla. Percussion over lung is normally resonant. Consolidated lung and atelectasis would sound dull. Pleural effusion would sound stony dull. If the patient has a pneumothorax, the lung would sound hyper-resonant. Okay, next I'm going to listen to your chest. So, can I get you to take deep breaths in and out through your mouth? Start by listening over the apices with the bell. Switch over to the diaphragm. I move in an S-shaped pattern so the right is compared to the left and upper compared to lower regions. I listen over the same areas you percussed, the apices and then three to four areas down the chest and two areas in the axillae. When presenting your findings on auscultation, are the breath sounds present, reduced or absent, specifying where the changes occurs? Are they normal vesicular or bronchial? Are there any added sounds such as wheeze, crackles or rubs? Thank you. All right, for the next part of the exam, Dara, uh, could I get you to swing your legs over the edge of the bed here? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm just going to Palpate feel the salivary the glands and the lymph nodes of the neck from behind the patient. Submental, submandibular, preauricular, postauricular, occipital, posterior chain, anterior chain. The examination of the posterior chest is often the primary focus of an OSCE. During closer inspection, you may more clearly see skeletal abnormalities, scars, asymmetry of chest wall movements, or the swelling of subcutaneous emphysema. Okay. Uh, are you in any pain, Dara? No. Okay. This assesses for any rib trauma. If there is a fracture or bruise, the pain localizes to the affected area. If already done as part of examination of the anterior chest, it is not necessary to repeat here. This assesses symmetry of chest wall movement. This assesses chest expansion. Thumbs should move symmetrically and normal expansion is at least 5 centimeters. Your thumbs must meet at the moment of full expiration for an accurate assessment of chest expansion. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Can I get you to put your arms around uh, yourself as if you're hugging yourself? Okay, uh, can you repeat after me? Blue balloons. This Blue rotates balloons. the scapulae out of the way. Blue balloons. Blue this balloons. assesses tactile fremitus. Position the side of your Blue hand balloons. in the intercostal spaces to Blue maximize balloons. sensitivity. Fremitus is increased over consolidation, Blue lower balloons. collapse, or solid masses. Blue it is decreased over effusion. Blue balloons. Blue balloons. Blue balloons. Blue balloons. Blue balloons. Thank you. So Darren, now I'm going to tap uh, again on your back. Percuss the posterior chest, starting with the supraclavicular fossa over the apex of the lung. Next, percuss the clavicles directly. Percuss in an S-shaped pattern, which compares left to right and upper zones to lower zones. If you have not already done so when examining the anterior chest, percuss two areas in the axillae. Now I'm going to listen to your breathing. So, can you take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth, please? Start by listening over the apices with the bell. Switch over to the diaphragm. Move in an S-shaped pattern so that right is compared to left and upper compared to lower regions. Listen over the same areas you percussed. The apices four to five areas down the chest and two areas in the axillae. When presenting your findings on auscultation, are breath sounds present, reduced or absent? 
specify where the changes occur. Are they normal vesicular or bronchial? And are there any added sounds such as wheeze, crackles or rubs? Remember your anatomy. Do not listen over the spine or over the scapulae. Listen over the same areas Thank for you. vocal resonance. And can I get you to repeat blue balloons? Uh, every time I move my chest. There we go. Blue balloons. 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 Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Dara. So we're going to reposition you again. I'll get you to sit back against this bed again, please. Right, now. Okay, I'm going to lower the bed now. I'll get you to lie down. Uh, I'm going to put my hand on your tummy and get you to take some deep breaths, all right? You don't have any pain in your tummy, do you? No. Okay. Next, palpate for the liver. If a liver edge is felt, note the consistency. I'm just going to tap down. Try and find the liver. Could you put your index finger here, please? Percussion is used to estimate the liver span. A normal liver span is 10 to 12 centimeters. So you can take your hands down now. Inspect the legs for swelling. Palpate for edema, which may be seen in deep vein thrombosis, congestive cardiac failure, or renal failure. To examine for deep vein thrombosis, start by assessing for asymmetry of calf diameter. Measure calf diameter for a more formal comparison of the two. Thank you. Put that leg down. And if you just bend the other knee. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, I'm just going to feel your calves. Just tell me if you feel any pain. I'll paint the calves for tenderness. Note any rashes on the legs. Okay. Cool. All right, that's everything, Darren. Thanks very much for all your help. Thank you. Okay.